This particular technology, it is absolutely appropriate for different countries to take different approaches. And the approach we've set out for the UK is the right one for this country because it builds on our existing strengths, which is in R&D, which is in uh, inter uh, intellectual property, which is in uh, compound semiconductors. And, for example, in launching our strategy, I was visiting the compound semiconductor cluster in South Wales, where we have a, a, one of the few assets uh, in the world uh, in, in, in terms of a cluster of businesses that are all, uh, that are all uh, focused on, on, on that part of the technology. Now, that's a strength that Britain has. We're very proud of that. And we know that if we build on our strengths, we'll be able to grow the sector further that means jobs, and again, that also means huge amounts of opportunity when you consider what chips go into. But also it means we can look at uh, helping companies be resilient to supply chain disruptions, and fundamentally we can protect our national security. So this is the right strategy for the UK, and it's built on our existing strengths. Uh, and I think we, we know that there's been this sort of push from... Uh, let's say, like-minded countries to, to build a semiconductor strategy together. We know the US, UK, uh, South Korea, and Japan uh, sort of talking amongst governments around how to protect supply chains, etc. You know, the US has sought to, to lure in companies like TSMC from Taiwan or Samsung from South Korea to reshore some of that manufacturing to, to bolster supply chains um, in the most advanced chips, you know, looking at seven nanometers and below. Um, what about the UK when it comes to working with uh, some of these advanced manufacturers, in particular TSMC? Are there any conversations at the moment ongoing to, to reshore manufacturing in these cutting edge chips, particularly with bringing TSMC to the UK? Well, as I say, our strategy particularly focuses on compound semiconductors, so a different strand of the technology. And we think that's the right approach in terms of supporting uh, what is already strong in the economy and in terms of using a billion pounds of taxpayers' money to go even further. But what I would also point out is that the Prime Minister came back from the G7 with a really uh, significant partnership with Japan in which we will go further uh, and faster together. And I think that's a very good indicator of the kind of attention that there does need to be on semiconductors, of course, globally. But it shows that Britain is part of that, playing a globally leading role in that with good partners such as Japan. You say that you're specifically focusing on, on the UK strengths, compound semiconductors. Many would argue actually the UK uh, a few years ago gave up its lead in allowing ARM to be sold to SoftBank. Was that a mistake? I think you could pick uh, all sorts of examples that would prove any story you wish to in terms of, in that, terms that, of who... That is a critically important chip in, company that was... In terms, you know, of, in terms of who owned, lists In terms where. of not just listings, but I mean in terms of the technology that is now owned by a, by a Japanese firm. But what you actually saw last week on the launch of our strategy was a range of firms across a range of parts of the supply chain uh, supporting our strategy as the right thing for Britain. You had businesses who were thrilled by it, delighted by it, I'm quoting here. You had businesses who thought this was a very sensible approach to building on our strengths and being able to help their, their section of industry to thrive. Yeah. I think that is a really important achievement for this strategy. And I do see from, South Wales, from, from uh, the South of Wales and elsewhere around the whole of the UK how that will benefit people as well individually.